Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Monday. Let's all clap for another bright, shiny, gleaming, beautiful week. We actually had some news this morning. How about that? Yeah. Let's dive on in. Let's thank Walter Cronkite above. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's start with a prayer to Xbox. A news story. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Thank you, Xbox, for uh, everything you give us. All right, everybody. It's Teraflop Monday. The next-gen consoles have got them, and we want them bad. Uh, yeah, show me them Teraflops. Please, woman. Show me Teraflops. <laughs> we can't get into no? that this okay. early. Okay. You probably already know that we're on the eve of the next console generation with the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 set to hit retail this holiday season. Everyone's foaming at the mouth and writing 50,000 opinion pieces trying to stave off the pre-console winter. Us included. Our yeah. next video, 13 Things the PS5, probably Probably will not look like. For all of you geniuses <laughs> in there saying slow news week, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it's been a slow news Duh. year. So anyway, both Sony and Microsoft have been slowly dripping out information about their new machines. And this morning we got a lot more details about the upcoming Xbox Series X, right Brian? Yeah, and it sounds like it's gonna be a tiger under the hood if you know what I mean, boys. <sighs> Meow. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, this comes from uh, uh, Bill Spencer. Y'all know him. Y'all love him. He dropped some new details on us at 6 a.m. And I was like, Jesus Christ, Bill Spencer. Some of us don't even love our jobs that much to get in at 6 a.m. on a Monday. I mean, I am, but that's just because I got kids I got to take to school. It's not because I love it. Does Phil have kids? Did he? Was he sitting at a computer all night with the post button published, ready to go at his finger? And then he, he pressed it and he's like, get up, get up. There's Xbox news. Like, everybody, everybody, get up. We're live. We're live. He's talking to his kids. Get up. These kids live in constant fears. <laughs> chaotic household where I wake them up in the middle of the night. Yeah, let us get our coffee first, dude. I have to get the whole enema set up and everything. What? Like a coffee It's enema. a coffee. Do people do that? It actually helped us to have some fresh news this morning, so we're just kidding, Philly Spence. We love you, baby. Seriously, we love you so much. Please, please say it back. So here's what the big Phil laid on us in his early morning blog post titled, What You Can Expect From The Next Generation Of Gaming. First up, he confirmed what has long been rumored that the Xbox Series X will have a whopping 12 teraflops of computing power. Whoa! Which is <laughs> twice that of an Xbox One X and more than eight times the original Xbox One. They're flying, they're flying too close to the sun. Those oh. wings are gonna melt. Yeah, that's a lot of flop. You know, too the, many. The average human only uses 10% of their brain's teraflops. That's right. As right. a fan of big naturals, I want all the flops I can get. Ooh. One step closer to being able to fully disassociate from this world. He wrote, Xbox Series X delivers a true generational leap in processing and graphics power with cutting edge techniques resulting in higher frame rates, larger, more sophisticated game worlds, and an immersive experience unlike anything seen in console gaming. I was getting sophisticated. <laughs> it's a huge leap forward for the Xbox, and they also said that the new console will support up to 120 FPS for some buttery smooth gameplay. Ooh, sexy. So for comparison to show just how far computers have come, industry analyst Daniel Ahmad tweeted a picture of an IBM supercomputer from 2001, which had the same amount of teraflops as the Xbox Series X. It cost uh, $110 million and filled up an entire room. Couldn't even play Fortnite. No. <laughs> you couldn't dab. Brian, tell us more about these new features, these sexy new features. Oh, uh, there's so many of them. The Xbox Series X will also support hardware accelerated direct X ray tracing, which is the first in console gaming. Keep going, I'm almost there. I'm just kidding, orgasming is a sin. Ray tracing is not. What if you bust while ray tracing? <laughs> So you put your, your cool shades on and you're just like one of those Japanese machines that has like a you walk up to it and just like If I don't qualify for sperm donation in real life, either way horrifying. Okay, uh, what that means. Well, Spencer said is that the games will have true to life lighting, accurate reflections and realistic acoustics. If I talk into a fan in a video game, will it make my voice do that cool robot thing? Why don't I have any friends? <laughs> it will also utilize what's called variable rate shading, which Spencer Spencer said, will let developers more efficiently use the power of the console. The power of the console in the <laughs> palm of my hand. He wrote, rather than spending GPU cycles uniformly to every single pixel on the screen, they can prioritize individual effects on specific game characters or important environmental objects. This technique results in more stable frame rates and higher resolution with no impact on the final image quality. Yeah, it sounds like a level of customization that developers didn't have before to spend system power on specific things, so it'll be really cool to see how they make use of it. Yes, and Brian, there's more. Solid state drives, everybody's been talking about them. That's been a key point uh, that both Sony and Microsoft have been making about their next consoles. Spencer said the Xbox Series X's next 
generation SSD will mean that quote, game worlds are larger, more dynamic and load in a flash and fast travel is just that. Fast. <laughs> Take Love me it. to the game zone. Uh -huh. Do you guys have SSDs on your computers? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you not? Yeah. Please. <laughs> You're about to have SSD's nuts in your mouth. RIP loading screens. We can't say we'll miss you, but it still feels like we should commemorate your passing. I once spent eight minutes on a Skyrim load screen just twirling that ugly frosty spider oh. around kids these days. Granted, the disc was broken. The Xbox Series X will also have a quick resume feature that will let you continue multiple games from suspended states almost instantly, which is super cool and a real testament to what a processing beast this thing is gonna be. Yeah, the ability to have multiple games running and to cycle through them is definitely a first. As Spencer put it, the next console generation will be defined by more playing and less waiting. Thank God, because I'm incredibly busy refreshing my Twitter feed. I yeah. popped off a weirdly specific joke for four people, and it's not doing very well. He also talked about something called dynamic latency input, which Spencer said will synchronize your inputs immediately with what's displayed to make the latency as little as possible. <laughs> Tiny little latency. <laughs> right now my latency is this big. So you're saying- This is how latent I am. <laughs> right, and what, yeah. so what you're saying is what you do want is- What I'm trying this. to get is this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, this is- I don't is, know what analogy we're going this for. This is the dream right here. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so another new feature is variable refresh rate. That synchronizes the display's refresh rate to the game's frame rate. Now, Spencer said that'll maintain smooth visuals without tearing and also ensure minimal lag. Awesome. Now, will you please make my TV stop turning on to cinema mode? Seriously, I don't know how to change it back. Can one of you kids come to my house and help me fix it? So this is some seriously powerful stuff. Needless to say, the Xbox Series X is looking to come out of the gate pounding its chest. Uh, Amir, you can make something out of this, right? <laughs> Interestingly, a lot of these specs have been heavily rumored for a while now, and credit where credit is due. The folks at Windows Central correctly predicted a lot of this a few months ago, like the fact that the Xbox Series X would have 12 teraflops. So one particularly interesting thing to note about the leaks is this rabbit hole that was reported on at the end of December. Basically, there was a GitHub leak of supposed internal testing data straight from AMD regarding both next-gen consoles. Part of the leak posited that the Xbox Series X would have 12 teraflops of RDNA 2, variable rate shading, and direct X ray tracing, which was all confirmed in the blog post this morning. That leak also had some things to say about the PS5, right, Brian? Yeah, there was a ton of PS5 supposed specs, one of which was that Sony's next-gen console would only have, get ready, boys, 9.2 teraflops. <laughs> So considering that the GitHub leak was bang on in terms of the Xbox Series X, does this mean it'll actually be a more powerful console than the PS5? We won't know for sure until Sony says literally anything about their console, but there's definitely a reason to think so. <laughs> Moving on to other features, Spencer also talked about backwards compatibility, which yes. was one of the best features on the Xbox One. Seriously. Yep. As for compatibility going forward and backwards, <laughs> they oh. said that they're working on ensuring that Xbox One games, as well as backwards compatible 360 and OG Xbox games will look as good as possible on the new console. Kind of a bummer that it'll only be backwards compatible with games that are already backwards compatible on the Xbox One, but it's not a huge deal. That's a, an enormous collection of games. So they're also going to introduce something called Smart Delivery, which means that if you buy one version of a supported Xbox game, you'll have access to the best version of that game, no matter which hardware you're playing it on. Basically eliminating the need to buy multiple copies. That'll be really nice when it comes to cross-gen games. Are you listening, Nintendo? Microsoft says it'll use Smart Delivery on all its in-house games, and CD Projekt Red has also said it'll do it for Cyber. Punk 2077. Yeah, and if you're wondering if Game Pass will live to see the next generation, fret not, it will. Of Spencer wrote that Game Pass will continue to have our first party games like Halo Infinite included at their launch. That rules. Yeah, that's, 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 that's so that's great. Big. Yeah, so that's good news considering how strong Game Pass has become. Yeah, all in all, there were a lot of new details that were pretty encouraging about the Xbox Series X. Definitely seems like Microsoft is trying to carry over what it did right this generation and to fix what it got wrong. Wait. There's not gonna be a bundled connect this time? I'm Han what? Solo, I'm Han Solo. Oh uh, boy. Again. Cool. Yeah, thank you. But are we ever going to get a big reveal event for the Xbox Series X, Brian? 
Yeah, because this slow rollout of features is a pretty big change from the way Sony and Microsoft have done it in the past. Ahmad, the analyst, noted that both Sony and Microsoft have taken interesting approaches to the reveal of the upcoming next generation consoles. Instead of a dedicated event or a big blowout at E3, we've seen a drip of information through articles, tweets, and more. Still much to learn about through the year. So idiots like us will continue to write stories about it. How is Imagine Dragons going to get paid if there's no <laughs> conference? There's still, Jeep, there's still Jeep commercial. But then again, the Xbox One didn't get announced until six months before it launched, so there's still plenty of time to do a big event. It's a long way from now until the holiday season. So this latest post is also a sign that despite some of Spencer's comments in the past about cloud gaming being the future, that Microsoft still cares very much about consoles. Yeah, earlier this month in an interview with TechSite Protocol, Spencer was pretty candid about who he considers to be his competitors. Specifically, he said, when you talk about Nintendo and Sony, we have a ton of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward. Ooh. Yeah, that's all because of cloud gaming, and Phil was pointing out that neither Sony nor Nintendo owns high-end cloud infrastructure like Microsoft's Azure platform. And he's right. While Microsoft is about to roll out their new console hardware, they've also been pouring tons of resources into their Project X cloud streaming service, which is currently in beta. But while the future might be on the horizon, I certainly hope so, uh, this shows that there's still a lot of room for old school hardware. Google Stadia has not exactly set the world on fire. Oh, oh Danny boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pour one out for Google Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like we're in one of those transitional periods where some gamers might jump to the cloud while others keep their hardware for a little while longer. So that's all we know at this point about the Xbox Series X. When will Sony show off more of the PlayStation 5? If they're trying to keep up with Microsoft, maybe it'll be sooner rather than later. The past and the future seen at once through the eye of a needle. I will show you all consoles in a grain of sand. <laughs> That's always been the issue with consoles, but it's especially tough late in this generation. So maybe Cyberpunk will be a next-gen game. Yeah, maybe it'll uh, cross-gen and it'll have graphical downgrades for the PS4 and Xbox One. I mean, that wouldn't be I'm the first thinking. time that's happened. Yeah, I have a strange tickling in my balls that Cyberpunk is gonna be a PS5 and Xbox 